when you get to the acids base section of your course, there's a lot of places to have a lot of fun. There's lots of bright color changes. You can use lots of indicators. It's really a time when my class gets alive, and it's really towards the end of the school year, so it's at the point in time that the students are starting to get a little bit more distracted anyway, so it's a really nice way to sum up the year. Plus, it integrates a lot of concepts from the previous part of your course. One thing I like to do to introduce the concept of acids and bases is play a little bit of a game show. You can use this anywhere in your, in your unit on acids and bases. You can use it at the beginning as just a fun introduction, or if you want to use it for more advanced or assessment, you can start to put in some more sophisticated examples of what we're going to be demonstrating, which is the acids and bases of common household, or the acid and base nature of common household items. So we've got three volunteers from the audience today. These are experienced chemistry teachers, but they're going to be playing the role of a typical introductory learner in a high school setting. So they may get some of the answers right, they may get some of the answers wrong, and actually sometimes I'll just pick something up when I'm at the store, not knowing if it's an acid or a base, and test it myself to find out. So there were times that I've done this demonstration or this lab activity, more of a classroom activity, without actually knowing the answer myself, and it's a fun inquiry experiment for even me to start to figure out what exactly is going on and why would this thing be an acid or a base. So there might be some that even you realize that you didn't recognize were either acid or basic, or maybe neither, that we're going to be testing today. So let's get this started. We're going to be playing The PH is Right. Come on down, Linda. You're the next contestant on The PH is Right. And Cindy, come on down. You're the next contestant on The PH is Right. And Margaret, come on down. You're our last contestant on The PH is Right. So we're going to start with various products today. We're going to be answering if they are acid and base. You guys have cards here to indicate what your choice is. And whichever of our contestants has the most correct answers is going to win a new car. <laughs> Flynn really went all out for this one. All right, so our first one, we'll start off with some of the easy ones. We have lemon juice, acid or base. Let's find out. Now, to test all of my acids and base today, I have the help of Universal Indicator. Now, unfortunately, lemon juice is already a little bit colored, so I'm going to add some water to this stuff. Make sure you're using distilled or deionized, by the way, just to dilute that down a little bit. And we're going to use Universal Indicator. Universal Indicator turns red under acidic conditions and blue-violet under basic conditions, but it goes the full spectrum. So green is about neutral, blue-violet is a little bit basic, and red-orange is a lot acidic. So let's find out. All right, it looks like we have red. So we have acid. All of our contestants get a point. You guys go on to the next round. All right, so that's the first one. Now, our next product that we're going to be testing out, baking soda. We have several people picking bases, so let's find out what happens. And I'm going to need to rinse this off just a smidge. Important to rinse to prevent contamination. All right, so we've got baking soda dissolved in water. And let's add some universal indicator. We're just a little bit more blue than we are green, so we're just slightly basic here. All of our contestants get another point. Excellent, nice work. All right, our next product, vinegar. Tasty, refreshing drink in the summertime. Let's put some vinegar into our cup here. And we have acid, acid, acid down the row. Either they're all cheating or all thinking the same thing. But <laughs> vinegar is, in fact, an acid. All right, excellent. Our next product, Windex Streak-Free Shine. All right, let's find out with Windex. Now this one's a little bit blue, so I'm going to add some water to dissolve it down. And with the acid base indicator, we have a very dark blue color starting to form. So we have base and base. I'm sorry, contestant number three, not quite correct, but good try. You're still in the round, though. You've got a few right here. And our next product, we're going to test out Alka-Seltzer. For those times that it doesn't quite all go down the right way, acid or base.
Let's take a small amount of that tablet, dissolve it on down. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. But is it relieving acid or base? Ooh, starts out as an acid. Well, that's a little strange. Sorry, contestants, none of you get a point on this round. Why would Alka-Seltzer be an acid? Well, when it first starts to dissolve, that plop, plop, fizz, fizz is carbon dioxide that's coming out. We have a combination of citric acid and baking soda in the same tablet that starts to cause that effervescence and sets up that CO2 carbonate bicarbonate buffer inside of our flask here. So we get an acid first. Now, the interesting thing about this is if you let it sit, over time it becomes a little bit more basic as some of that carbon dioxide starts to come out of solution. But it definitely does come out as an acid. So that's one of the trickier ones, especially that my students think, because they think, oh, Alka-Seltzer is an antacid. It's got to be a base. But that's a really good one to open up a really good discussion with your students. So let's try another one. We have aspirin, acid or base. We have all acids. All right, let's see what happens. And let's get rid of some Alka-Seltzer here. Now, you have to dissolve the aspirin in a little bit of water here. This one, by the way, does not dissolve very well. Um, so you might have to stir it around for quite a while before you start to get the color change to happen. Um, sometimes I grind it up into a fine powder before I start. But we'll see if we can get enough dissolved here. All right, let's find out. Acid or base? Ooh, reddish color. It is, in fact, an acid. Aspirin contains acetyl salicylic acid, a weak uh, organic acid, but is, in fact, acidic. The reason they had bufferin in the 70s, and I think that's when they came around, because it was before I ever took aspirin as a kid, um, the bufferin was because aspirin used to give people a very upset stomach because it was sort of a harsh acid when it got into your stomach and really could irritate it. They would buffer it so it would come out to a much more neutral pH, not quite as acidic. All right, contestants, I think we all got a point on that one. Excellent. Uh, moving on, we've got milk of magnesia. Mom to the rescue when you have an upset tummy. Acid or base? It looks like all of our contestants have picked base. So uh, this stuff is, by the way, very thick. So take a small amount of it and dilute it with a whole lot of water. Because it does pretty much just a precipitate. Magnesium hydroxide has very limited solubility in water. Acid or base? Ooh, very dark blue-violet. All of our contestants get another point. Now, our next product up on the line. We have vitamin C. Good for common, keeping the common cold away from us. We have acid, acid, acid. So let's find out what happens. Vitamin C also in tablet form. So we're going to need to dissolve this in a whole lot of water. And I'm making a giant mess. Excellent. All right. Acid or base? Acid, acid, acid? Excellent. Very good job, contestants. Our next product up in the line, Rolaids. How do you spell relief? R-O-L-A-I-D-S, apparently, if you didn't pass third grade. All right. So we have Rolaids. Contestants, acid, base, it looks like we're all going to say base and our antacid. Well, right now it's acidic, but let's see what happens with a little bit of stirring. Rolades are oftentimes calcium or aluminum hydroxide, so they're not very soluble in water, which is a good thing. You don't actually want your antacids to be highly soluble in water because if you get too much, you don't want to neutralize all of your stomach acid. All right, so that does, in fact, come out base with some stirring. All of our contestants get another point. Excellent job. Next product up on the line, and now we're going to enter into some of the more sophisticated territories. We have bleach. Acid or base? All right, looks like most of our contestants have said acid. We have one that said base, so let's see what happens. And we'll add some universal indicator to this. 
very dark purple. In fact, Clorox is a very, very strong base, but the interesting thing that happens is that as you let it sit, you'll notice the color starts to change. I sometimes give my students a lab where I give them pieces of lipness or pH paper to take home and just test substances at home. Inevitably, 25% of them come back white. And they'll say, how do I define this as acid or base? And I said, what did you test? And they said, it was bleach. And I say, what does bleach do? Bleach things? So what you'll actually notice is that if you test right away, you will see that it is a base. But over time, that color is going to fade as it starts to bleach out the dyes that are in your beaker there, or the dyes that are in the universal indicator. So it looks like contestant one and three. I'm so sorry about contestant number two. You do get another point. All right, uh, let's go for a couple more here. We have tonic water. Acid or base. Looks like all of my contestants are picking acid. Let's find out what happens. Very useful in preventing malaria. All right, acid, acid, acid. And it's an acid. Anything carbonated typically becomes an acid. Carbon dioxide, when it combines with water, makes carbonic acid or the hydrogen carbonate ion, both of what end up being an acidic solution. All right, so that one's definitely an acid. All right, and we have shaving cream. Just used it this morning. Acid or base. All right, we've got base, acid, acid. Let's find out. Let's take off the safety cap. And we have shaving foam, and we mix it together, and it comes out pretty darn neutral. Well, that makes sense. You don't want something super basic on your skin. You don't want something super acidic on your skin. So nobody gets a point. Excellent. All right, moving on down the line. Uh, we have navel jelly. Just harvested it this morning. <laughs> Now, navel jelly is a rust dissolver, if you need to know what it's used for. Acid or base? All right, we have acid, acid, acid. Now, you have to be careful with the navel jelly, because it already is a bit pink. Um, so use a very, very small quantity of it and dissolve it in a lot of water. But it's sort of a gelatinous goo. And most of my students have never seen this before. Uh, it was given my, the idea was given to me by another chemistry teacher to start to use this. Um, and it took me a long time to find it. If you go to a hardware store, usually in their cleaning parts aisle, I've never found it in a regular supermarket. You usually have to go to the hardware to find it. All right, so add some water to this stuff. And figure out where I left my stirring rod. All right, so we have acid, 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 and in fact, very acidic. Now, most cleaning products are in fact basic. We want that basic quality so it can dissolve oils and grease and turn them into soap. But with a rust remover, you're not trying to remove oil or grease. You're trying to remove iron oxide. So what it typically contains is sulfamic acid, and that's what allows you to start to dissolve the rust and take it off of your plates or whatever you're using it for. So this one is, in fact, an acid. Not all cleaning products are basic. This is not one I would probably give my intro-level chemistry students, but something that I could bring as an example for my advanced-level chemistry students. All right, so we've got a couple more to go. We have secret. Strong enough for a man, but pre-age balanced for a woman. Acid or base. They're all saying base, so let's find out. Now, this is another difficult one, but it does have a nice fruity smell. All right, uh, you need to scrape some of this off and then dissolve it in some water, and this one usually makes a pretty big mess. All right, so we've got base, base, base. Little bit acidic. Interesting. Exactly what's that saying about women if their pH has to be balanced by an acid? 
perhaps a caustic wit. All right. Um, but it does come out slightly acidic. One of the interesting things to point out to students isn't so much the chemistry of what's happening with their underarm deodorant. Um, there was a study done to find out if the perspiration of women was actually significantly different than men, and it's not. It's a, just a complete advertising gimmicky host. Um, but it's a fun one to bring up for your students as a way to look at pH based on advertising claims. All right, so we have uh, just uh, one more that I want to get to today. We have lime away. Acid or base, calcium, lime, and rust remover. Looks like everyone's going for the acid, so let's find out. Or let's go this way. And I'll dilute that with some water just so we can get a little bit more of a clear solution. And the universal indicator says acid. Now, if you actually read the back of this one, this one contains sulfamic acid. Ooh, I mixed two of them up. This one has sulfamic acid. This is the one that has phosphoric acid. So navel jelly, rust remover, phosphoric acid. Lime away, calcium, lime, and rust remover, sulfamic acid. So you're making these things that usually contain group two metals, like the calcium that's in your calcium, lime, and rust. Um, remover is removing things. They're making, it's essentially an acid-base reaction between the calcium oxide or the calcium hydroxide that's sitting in your soap scum or on your calcium deposits and dissolves away with an acid-base reaction. Reaction. So both of these are acids where we'd expect all cleaning products to be basic. So we can see that my wonderful students here have learned that not all cleaning products are basic and that rust removers have become acidic even in our own lessons, so they all get one more point. So where are we on the point tally here? We have uh, one, two, looks like contestant number two has answered the most correctly. Congratulations, you get our car! Excellent, nice job! Now, to wrap up, it is a fun way to be a little bit of a ham in your classroom, and the more that your kids see that you really are as crazy as, as they think you are, um, the more fun it can be to have in your classroom if you just let yourself go once in a while. And this won't work for everybody, but it is really fun to just be a showman for a day and just have a fun time. Um, but in the process, you can see even in the short time that our our students here learn something about acid-based chemistry and can apply it to a new example. And you can challenge them and you can play with your own kids and whichever ones you want. You can also keep rotating through and just make one kid pick every single thing. Eventually some kid's going to get the hard one uh, or the hard ones. But it's an interesting way to bring in some everyday chemistry and start to discuss the acid-based nature of them. Um, all of the things that I've used here are just things that I've collected from the supermarket over time and I'll just say, oh that one looks interesting, how about I go grab that one? Uh, so think of whichever ones you have or whichever ones you can find easily. Um, by no means think you have to duplicate all of these, but there are some fun ones that I've found to use with my classroom. Thank you. <laughs>